Today is an Esmeraldas Beach road trip. So if you saw my video two videos ago, you know that last night we had an earthquake. Today we've decided we're just gonna take it easy. We're going to visit the Esmeraldas beaches. We've already been to Tonsupa, which is right here. Yesterday I went to Las Palmas in Esmeraldas City. And then today we are checking out Atacames, Sua, Same. We're doing it all in one day. So we're gonna have breakfast in one place, have lunch in another, have a drink in another. We're gonna show you the beach. It's really gonna be first impressions of these beaches because today we are headed to Mampiche, Ecuador. They are gonna spend a couple of days, but I really just wanted to check out these beaches because I know I'm gonna be back in Esmeraldas again. So I'm just, you know, scouting out where I should head next. We are in Atacames. So driving in, the first spot you want to hit is Calle Acacias. And this is where you'll hit all the comedores. So there's a long line of them, very friendly people. They've got menus, they'll tell you what they have, trying to lure you in with their delicious food. This is a spot where you can get local, traditional food at amazing prices. And this place is still 50% full. That's how good it is. People left their houses. They came down here. They're getting something to eat. We're here for breakfast. And there's so many things to eat. I don't know what we're going to try. Brinia came by and he's giving me a little bit of his coco to try. Mm, it's good. Okay, it's good. He knows. Here's the thing that I've learned about Esmeraldas. People will say to you, come in, try my food. If you don't like it, you don't have to pay for it because they are smart. They know there's no way you won't like it. And I feel like it's the same thing with this cocoa. It's like, try a little bit, see if you like it. If you want it, you can have some. Of course, you're gonna like it. This is delicious. So we're here at Comedor number five. It's a Saison de Doras. Now, to be honest, I think you could probably come to any of these places and have a really great meal. We just came here because they were so good at bringing us in. I think he said like, come over here and bring your camera. So we thought, why not? Uh, but the other thing I really like about this place is that when people talk about the cooks in Esmeraldas, they always talk about their Saison. And that's because cooks here are known for not using recipes, but like cooking with their heart. They cook traditional food, and it's just generations of fantastic food. And so when cooks from Esmeraldas are in other places throughout Ecuador, oftentimes to tell people that a restaurant is good, they'll say, oh, that cook, they're from Esmeraldas. And then so you know it's gonna be fantastic food. We have not had a bad meal at all. It's been fantastic. One plantain dish that I wanted to try here in Esmeraldas and that's majado, which is simply mashed plantain. Here I can see it's not simply mashed, it's also got some onion in it, we've got some cilantro, it looks like it might have some tomato in it. It's majado con camarón, so with shrimp al jugo, so that means with the sauce. So a little bit similar to what you would think of as seco. It's like a seco of shrimp because it also comes with that tasty juice. Now I love Tagrio. Tagrio is mashed plantain. It usually comes with cheese. I don't see any cheese in here but we'll see. So you can see it looks so tasty. The color of it is amazing. It smells freaking awesome. So it's got this like very deep rich sauce like a tomatoey broth. You can feel the onions have been sauteed. It's just super tasty. I haven't even had the shrimp yet. What do you think? Just the majado is fantastic. The majado is just fantastic. Yeah. Andreas hasn't tried the so, shrimp yet either. But let's get to the shrimp. Now, majado in other places is just simply mashed plantain. It's considered to be a very cheap, fast breakfast that you'll just have with a coffee. Very, very cheap. Here, they've taken it up this whole other notch by putting it in this rich sauce. And then you've got, of course, these local shrimp. Oh yeah. Mm. So other places when we travel, we have to have a recommendation. We have to know what is the best place to go to, like where does everyone love? But here in Esmeraldas, if you ask for directions, 
and then recommendations, they'll just say to you, just go to anyone. Just go to anyone, it's all good. What I love about this is this is the first Hasmeda he I think we've had. We've gotten a lot of jarred things in Tonsupa and in Esmeralda City. I mean, it was the same jar and it was still quite good. But it's not the same of having, this would be considered encebollado, encurtido. Aquí, aquí yeah. yeah, so it's like a pickled onion hot sauce. And then I'm gonna get some, get a little bit of everything. <laughs> so I've got some hot sauce, I've got some plantain, I've got some shrimp. Mmm. Oh, the hot sauce is a little bit hot. I'm glad I got some cocoa drink. <laughs> that is hot. I took too much. It's good though. Listen, you have to try the ahi first. Don't just eat ahi like I just did. Because now my tongue is burning. It was $4. This is enough for us to share. And it's fantastic. The cocoa was $1. That's the most expensive thing. And it was it's really good. Different than the cocoa you will get if you're laid in Wallaceo or Cuenca. <laughs> It's just that it's thinner, but it's very tasty, very refreshing. This is a really pretty beach. Now I know everyone wants to know, what is it like with the garbage? Well, it's a Sunday, so last day of the weekend, definitely seeing more garbage. Also more police and more garbage cans. Things here are a little bit more organized. You can get to a lot of little places along the beach. But look, it's just a little bit dirtier. The thing that looks very cool about this place is that right here on the beach are a bunch of cevicherias. And just like in Tonsupa, it looks like that they belong to an association of cevicheros. So they kind of set the price. So Andreas just brought up some really practical thoughts on having this like center for ceviche. Number one, it's covered. And so you know that there's going to be shade. We were dealing with raw fish here. Um, and so you don't have the people just out on the beach and you're depending on them to have good coolers also garbage cans there so that probably helps a little bit with the garbage and then also just a bit easier for people to go to you know where to go that's where you get the ceviche there's also an personal market here so Instead of people selling things on the beach, you can actually come here and have a look at whatever you'd like to buy. It's nice here. Also, like for me, it stops people from selling you stuff on the beach. If you want something, you come and get it. They've got little like circus games, fair games. You never win these, but if you want, you can play. You got one. One dog? One. Ah. <laughs> ah, <laughs> nice. <laughs> Everyone's a winner. What is that? It's like ba the barrilete. Oh, cool. But this one is just uh, pineapple. Yeah. yeah. All right, this ceviche hub, it was so hard to pass up. It looks so good. So many people are eating there, good prices. And it's just that we're going, we just ate. We're going to Playa Sua next. But I will say this about Esmeraldas as a whole. When people are trying to bring you in, trying to sell things to you, it's never very aggressive. They might ask once or twice, but as soon as we told them that we had just eaten at the Comedores, they were like, ah, okay, no problem. So everyone, you know, you need to hustle, make some money, bring people in, but nothing is too aggressive here. All right, so we've also been approached by a lot of people to do a number of tours. There's a peak out here. You can take a 40 minute boat ride out um, to get some pictures. It's supposed to be very beautiful. And also 
during whale watching season, they do offer those opportunities as well. Right now, it's $5 a person to go take that 40 minute tour. All right, we're back in the car, but before we left, we did speak to someone who owns a hotel. We just wanted to see what the price was. And so there's this hotel right here. We have not gone here. We don't know anything about it. It is on booking though. And Andrea spoke to uh, the woman at the front desk and she said that this corner where we parked and where the hotel is, is good and you can walk all the way down the kind of beach street until you get to the artisanal market and then after that she said it becomes complicated so it's interesting because i find here in esmeraldas when people describe somewhere that may not be safe they never say it's not safe they just say "Ooh," or they say it's difficult or it's complicated so i think if we came back we would take that advice So this is one of the places where you do need to have a guide because I wondered why this was called uh, the Suicide Cliff. And it's because the Princess of Sua was in love with the Prince of Tonsupa. And the Prince of Tonsupa died in battle and so the princess jumped right here. And so now it's known as Suicide Cliff. And we are now in Sua, which kind of reminds me of Scent of a Woman. Hua! I don't even know if I've seen that movie, but that's what it reminds me of. Anyway, we are here. The beach here is actually quite small. It's Chiquita, but it is beautiful. It looks like there's some wave breakers. Very much a local beach. This is a small little corner. It looks gorgeous. As soon as we got out of the car, someone came to try to sell us some tours. They're pretty cheap, and we're actually considering going to see the mangrove, which is right here, because you know, there's going to be birds there, so Andres wants to see it. <laughs> so in Esmeraldas, coco is called pipa. It's only in this province that you'll find it. If you call it coco, of course people will know what you're talking about, but what they're selling here is pipa. This was a fresh coconut water for $1.50. And then we brought our own straws. Bring your own metal straws. Easy to bring, you don't need plastic. These were in the fridge. They're so cold. And it's so hot and humid today, they're so nice. I love this spot. It's very small, kind of just like on a corner, but it's beautiful here. And I think we're gonna check out the mangrove. Are we gonna do the mangrove? Yeah, we're gonna do the mangrove. So this is a family-friendly beach. They put out this wave breaker here so that small children could safely swim. And then we drove through what is the beginning of a malacon. So they're trying to set things up. The first little bit was paved and then we went into dirt road. However, next year is an election. So that's a good sign that it will be completed. But this is just like a nice little spot for families to come. It's really lush. blue-footed booby there right there cool so this is a nudist beach we can't see anyone but also it looked like it was a hotel but our driver just told us it's just private this tour is a great way to see the region from the water it's very affordable and you'll see blue-footed boobies the birds that are so famous in the Galapagos and if you're a bird watcher you'll love the mangrove great so before we got on we confirmed again that we only wanted to go to the mangrove and they're like yeah 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 and a couple got on with us and we actually went out saw a bunch of other things and then went to the mangrove so of course when we got off we knew they were gonna say yeah but we showed you more than you wanted to see but the agreement was the mangrove for 250 a person and in the end we reminded them of that and they took the money. So I would say just be very firm before you get on the boat on what you want to see. But it was great. They're here on the weekends. They're also here during high season. 
250 for a tour for half an hour. It was really quite nice. We're at the last beach of our Esmeralda a beach hop of the day. We're at Playa Same. Uh, Same looks like the word same. There's nothing the same about this beach compared to the other ones. It is beautiful out here. It's a gorgeous, large beach. So large that they've got one end that is heavily populated and the other end, you know, there's some huts and things, but there's lots of space here. It's gorgeous. Now the sand here is a little bit lighter in color, but it is not as fine. And what's interesting about this beach is it's becoming really trendy, but also very controversial. So at one end of the beach, there's this development called Casablanca. And so in Ecuador, all of the beaches are public. They're all free. Now, maybe you can't use a hotel's entrance to that beach, but you can be on any beach you want to be on. And to be honest, I think, eh, that part is not cool at all. Beaches should be for everyone. It doesn't matter where you want to be. So maybe you can't sit in their beach chairs or use their services, but you should be able to sit wherever you want on any public beach. It's beautiful here. It's such a warm day. And so we decided that it's now time for a beer. Cheers. All right, so we were coming back to the car <laughs> to change batteries for this camera and the car started shaking. So last night there was an earthquake and we just had a, like a little mini one. Andreas is on Twitter right now trying to figure out what it is. But here we noticed both in Sua and in Same, there are um, signs that say the tsunami evacu evacuation route. So there are signs to direct you of how to get to higher land and then also here at this bar, uh, they just told us that this thing right behind me that's a tsunami alarm so it will ring if everybody needs to get off the beach and onto higher ground this is crazy now we're just like should we stay at this beach should we head to Montpiche we are actually contemplating hitting one more beach so we're, we're gonna see how things go I think it was it was just like a tremor the car shook as we were next to it but that was it right now things feel okay so this is where we started right there at this bar. So you can see this part of Same, very low key, low development, using natural materials. It's actually quite beautiful, still quite green. And then as you come through here, this is, they're looking to sell that. And then this building right here, not even finished. So it looks like it was a hotel complex that maybe they started in 2019, but the room's nothing done. It's just a shell. And then as you go down here, it gets more and more developed. Twitter is not loading right now. And I can tell Andreas is quite worried. He also has not really been in an earthquake along the coast, just felt tremors in Cuenca. And so I do feel better knowing that there's this tsunami alarm, but we're now having this discussion of, are we underreacting? Are we overreacting? I think we'll be okay, but I think just our dynamic is I'm the person who's usually underestimating, he's overestimating. And then sometimes, fortunately, we meet in the middle. All right, so we decided not to eat in Same because just down the road from that is Tonchiwe which we heard from someone from this province has one of the best bolón de camarón. So we're at La Sirenita and uh, they were just about to close, but they said to us, no problem, we can serve you this bolón because in fact, it's really good. So just stopping in for a little bite, a little bolón, a little juice, uh, strawberry juice, and then we will see. Down the road, there was also some food that looks good. So we thought maybe we can have a little bit here and a little bit there, and then we'll keep heading. All right, so this balloon is looking so good. Look at this crust. For me, that is the measure of a good balloon. It's crusty on the outside, gooey on the inside. The sauce is amazing. Now 
you're probably wondering, is this balloon better than Las, the one that I had in Las Palmas? They're different. They're both amazing. And then this. The crunch, they do. Mm. Crunchy, creamy. Mmm. We almost didn't come here, but I have to thank you now. I knew you would have a good recommendation. When a local tells you where to eat, you gotta go there. This balloon is five dollars. Got like a little mini jug of strawberry juice for two dollars. Both big sizes. You can split it. Lots of food. And this dog is looking at us like just waiting for us to drop something. This time I'm gonna try the ahi first because I don't want to burn myself like I did earlier today. Mmm. Ooh. Vinegary. But fruity? So nice. I don't know. There's carrot. There's actually carrot and onion in there. Mmm. It's tasty. It's really tasty ahi. You know, some people say they don't like plantain. I believe they haven't had good plantain. Andrea says that it tastes better because we're risking our lives. So far, we have had a really easy time, except for that earthquake. The most dangerous thing so far has been the earthquake. We've been very careful to follow people's advice, stay out of certain areas. I'm gonna leave this video here, but if you stuck around, I just want you to know that 72% of people who watched my last video have not subscribed. So if you're one of those people, please, subscribe and let me know in the comments below and if you're already a subscriber let me know what you think about Esmeralda's now would you come here to go to the beach